Hi everybody, my name is Chris Dell. I'm a loud introvert. I'm a recovering graphic designer, middle child, uh, an A-minus student, but a first-class troublemaker. And the one thing I want to share with you as a creator is that instead of looking for a perfect plan where all the variables have been worked out, where you can make no mistakes, there's no opportunity for failure, I just want you to start, to start something today and learn throughout the process because that's really how we grow and evolve as a human being. We'll start from now, but um, okay. <laughs> I, I already have a few more questions just because it's interesting to, to know that insight. It's like now you're this like powerhouse of content, but was that your intention in the first place? Was that ever your intention, you know? I, I don't think um, it's as clear as I knew what my intention was. Yeah. And I'll talk about it a little bit later today because I think too many people get caught up with before they take a step, they need to know where it ends. Mm. And that's why people don't take that first step. Right. And so I'm, I'm mm. a much a believer like, you know what, you kind of have a general destination. And then what you should do is just go forward and then adjust as you go, knowing that the path yeah. is going to meander. It's not a straight line. Yeah. And that's the thing that trips people up so much. So I know right. I can't tell you that was my intention. I knew one, I love to teach. I want to find a way to effectively teach more people at scale. Yeah. Was there a business here? Could I do this? Was there influencing and kind of publishing content at the rate in which we're doing it now? No, yeah. I couldn't have imagined that. Mm. So it's not, it's not a thing of I wake up one day <laughs> and think, oh, I've got this realization that I'm going to be a content creator, a successful content creator, and then I pursue that. It's more you know, in the process, you kind of find out where you want to go. Yeah, at least for me. I'm, I'm sure some people wake up with some grand vision and they, they meditate <laughs> yeah. on it. A whole they go to a spiritual yeah. retreat and they figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, not, not so for me. I'm a really big believer in that life is too unpredictable and plans are overrated. Mm. And, and the thing that I can see that's most, uh, the thing that inhibits people from taking action yeah. is they need to know where everything is going to go because they don't want to make one false step. They want to be as mm. straight as possible. Mm. I just don't see it like that. Your, the company keeps changing, growing, evolving in ways I could not have imagined, nor do I want to be limited by that. Yeah. The other thing about having a very fixed mindset about where you're going to go is when opportunity comes to you, you, you say that doesn't fit in the plan, so you mm. say no, you shut things down. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think that's really the thing that's going to hold you back. How much of what we see online from the future and yourself has been tested prior to hitting the public stage? You know, like all those... Um, I, Alex, Alex, he was here actually before yesterday. Yeah. We had the dual um, Spanish English uh, yeah. podcast. Yeah. Okay. And before he was giving you a shout out about the carousels, right? Yeah. On Instagram. And yeah. that's something that you really uh, put out there like quite a lot. And mm -hmm. it's very engaging. Like it's true. Mm. It, it works, you know? It works. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good example of something that works. But how much is not getting out there? It's been tested by you before you start teaching that. That's, that's a really good question. I think it can be a little dangerous when you tell people to do things you have not done yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I think I've done enough in my life that I can speak about those things pretty confidently. Mm -hmm. the, the irony is what, what the people on the internet, the kids on the internet don't understand is they're like, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. They'll say that on our sales and, and how to price and negotiate. What they don't understand is I've been on hundreds of calls with clients yeah. that have spent more money with us in one project than they might make in a year or even a lifetime. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's tested. It's mm. just I haven't taught you this because it's happened behind closed doors. So mm. now I'm going to go out and talk about the 20 plus years of experience. Mm. Mm. Now, there are some things that I'm learning in real time, things mm. about philosophy, about psychology, and that I'm going to share. But I usually disclaim that by saying, I'm just learning this. And if this helps you, great. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, you don't feel empowered, mm. inspired, or moved to take action, don't worry about it because I, I just mm. play a psychiatrist on TV. Yeah, right. Yeah, or a therapist. And I'm, I'm okay with saying, this I know, this I know nothing about. Yeah. But I have thoughts on it. Yeah. It's an opinion. So you're not necessarily saying, you know, I know it all. And I think that comes up, you know, quite, quite often as well. Like you, even when you invite uh, guests to the show, there's always a bit of that, you know, what can they teach me, you know? Absolutely. It's like a win to win situation. Everyone mm -hmm. learns, um, you know, and, and I think um, that's the beauty about what we do as well. It's like, it's forever evolving, you know, like you never sort of feel yeah. like you know it all. I mean, I don't think anyone ever feels like that, you know, but it's like, it's, like a, const know it all? it's a constant evolution of, you know, what can I learn today that can make me better from where I yeah. was yesterday. If you look at that as your mindset and the way that you make decisions, then I think you're going to live a very fulfilled life. you will probably be healthier mm. and, and probably wealthier. Mm. Um, but there are people who say, I've know it all. 
like our former president. It was like, I know more than everybody. Mm. I'm the smartest person. I'm, I'm like a, a stable genius. They, they say things like that. And I don't understand that because you, you <laughs> mm. basically close yourself off from self-discovery, from growth. Yeah. And to me, that's not a life I want to live. Yeah. Would you say um, creating content uh, makes you vulnerable? As in, maybe let me, let me rephrase that. Like, do you feel vulnerable when you, you know, put yourself out there and, uh, you know, literally tell uh, people what you have in mind and your own opinion? Yeah, I believe the reason why people don't share their opinions is because as soon as you have an opinion, and I share unpopular opinions, yeah. and that there's going to be a counter opinion. And mm. sometimes, like I said, it's met with a greater than equal force in response. Mm. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm not a young person. I've lived my life and I, I feel like I'm in that third chapter of three chapters of a story. Mm. And it, it, this, in this chapter, the character myself <laughs> is comfortable enough in my own skin that mm. I don't worry like, well, you don't like that idea? That's okay. Mm. There are other ideas. Mm. And that idea works for me. I understand that it doesn't work for you. I, I think in the realm of science, it's binary. This is true, this is untrue, this is a law, or this is a theory. Yeah. Mm. But in real life, I think there are multiple truths, and it really depends on the vantage point. Mm. When, when, when things aren't verifiably, like, can be verified via factual measurement, then there's a spectrum of possible answers. I only have one, mm. one of many. And when you, um, that's a really good question there, man, because <clears throat> when you start sharing that content about your personal experiences or your your business's experiences you sort of opening that door to what you've done in the past with clients you know price anchoring yeah. uh, negotiating all that sort of stuff yeah mm. um, I personally don't feel like sharing my experiences on how we did a deal you know like yeah. how, how I made a mm. hundred bucks right because yeah. I don't want the client to think that I did some dodgy thing on like some black <laughs> magic right you know mm. how do you manage to do that man Mm, that's a good question. Those mm. are real fears that I've had as well. When we were making content at first, I didn't mm. want to do it because it was in my head that if I release this information, my current, past, and future clients are going to be impacted by this mm. information. Mm -hmm. And so how much do I disclose? And at the beginning, I'm mm. kind of tight with it. And then one day, I'm like, just screw it. I'm just going to say whatever I want to say. <laughs> because yeah. it's not helping anybody. Yeah. It's like people are like, uh, I've had a traumatic experience. And you don't say it. And like you're just teasing me right now. Mm. And then you start to doubt the authenticity of the person. Mm. And so here's the wild thing. We start making content. It's not like we have a giant audience. But some of the videos are getting more views. Mm. And a new client calls us. And I was mm. like, holy cow. They're fans of the channel. They know how I talk about money. Wow. Basically, they have all the tools that I teach to counteract me. Yeah. And I was thinking, this is gonna be a good yeah. test for me. Yeah. They, they How do you see your do hand, that? right? Like, yeah, like I showed them, this is- <laughs> like you, you gave the all enemy weapons. all the weapons. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> I wanted to have the upper hand, but yeah. here's the crazy thing, and this people don't think about. And, and my producers told me, they're fans of the channel. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be weird. Yeah. I get on the phone, I barely even say anything. They start playing my part for me against themselves. Yourself, yeah. It was the most brilliant thing. I'm like, wow. I don't think I've ever had a client <laughs> sell themselves to us more than this. Yeah. You know, because they knew what I was going to say. And so they answered it preemptively so, in the positive in my favor. <laughs> so wow. I, I think a lot of times okay. what we do is we think there's a scenario. There's not an infinite, but there's a lot of possible outcomes. We dream up the worst one. And then we mm. say that one must be true, mm. untested. And we tell ourselves the self story that that's going to be the way. Mm. And that's how we, we get stuck really fast. Is there a way for you to stop that uh, those thoughts coming to your head? No. Um, I forget who said this earlier today. Um, uh, I think it was, oh shoot, I forget her name. But she said <laughs> something like, ask yourself, is this true? Mm. It was that Dr. Oh, Dr. 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 Mar yeah. What's her name? Maria? Uh, Mary Pippin. Yeah, 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 Mary. So she's like, is this true? Mm. Like, is it fact? Mm. Um, is it helpful? Yeah. And then she said, is it nice? I don't, I can get rid of the nice part. Yeah. And then my, my fourth or third addition to this is how do I want to respond? Mm. So if you have these thoughts, you can just ask yourself, is this true? And, and in, in critical language, what we say is, do you have any evidence that supports your point of view? Mm. And if you had to disprove it, what would you say? That's the counter. And then as a critical thinker, you would then be able to balance both pieces of information, mm. move, move off your, um, your personal bias and emotions and attachment of things mm. and say, well, given the body of evidence, 80% feels more true than the 20%. Mm. I must act this way because it's in my own benefit to do this. Yeah. Mm. But people get messed up about this all the time because yeah. we're so ruled by our emotions yeah. and we never stop to think, where's this coming from? Is it true? Is it helpful? Does yeah. it empower me? And we just act. 
You know, I, I heard this thing the other day, which I really liked that about negative thoughts, mm -hmm. that they're like ants. Uh, if you leave a breadcrumb somewhere, one ant will come and it takes seconds for the other ones to arrive. To arrive yeah. And it, it used that analogy as, you know, negative thoughts. You know, you have to stop that one ant from arriving in your mind Bring so that the other colony. ones don't come all together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's the Native American um, proverb, something like that. There's two wolves uh, or something like, have you heard of this one? No. And then one, one wants to tear you down, one wants to support you. And the, the young boy asks the, the, the elder, which one wins? Whichever one you feed more. Yeah. So if you feed the negative thoughts, that's what's that's gonna, gonna win. win. Yeah, it's gonna win. Hey man, um, the there's there's a thing about so Ali and I, as I would say, we're the face of what we do, right? Every yep. day, you know, we pitch for a, pro a project is Ali and Ollie. You know, it sounds like a boy band, but <laughs> sometimes it goes like that. Yeah. The podcast is us, you know. So mm -hmm. it's in it's really hard for us to remove from the equation in order for th the things we do to advance, right? To yep. keep moving forward. Um, what's gonna happen to the future, as in the company? when Chris is, just wants to go on a holiday to Mexico, you know? Well, I'm here right now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the future continues to move forward without me. Yeah. Um, What's the, I guess the question is, uh, obviously you're here, um, which by the way, thanks. Uh, but yeah, the question is, uh, how do you plan for these things to happen? You know, you on the other side of the world. Oh, you design yourself out of the business as soon as possible. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when would that happen for you? For me, almost immediately. Because okay. maybe I'm just really lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do all the work. I don't want to be the choke yeah. point. So even when I got out of school and I got my first freelance gig, as soon as I wasn't required to work in the office, I just called up my buddies and said, hey, do you want to work? Mm. I'll pay you. What do you want? And mm. they would say some rate. And I was like, okay. The difference between what I can command and what you want to get paid, <clears throat> so it's fair to you, it's fair to the client, mm. I make the difference in between those two things. Mm. So here's the thing that might be a big reframe for both of you. Most people think entrepreneurs is about management, about sales and marketing and being charismatic. If you can reframe what entrepreneurship as or a leader as a teacher, mm. your whole mindset will change. So what I was doing was I was teaching my former uh, uh, house, uh, uh, what is it, my former roommate was this is how I think, this is how I design. Yeah. And I want to teach you that. And I want to close the gap between the way you do things and the way I do things. Mm -hmm. The quicker I can do that, the more efficient that I am in doing that, the more money I can make quicker. Mm -hmm. and so I just kept bringing on more people and just working in that role yep. as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So uh, technically, I've been a teacher for 15 years. I've been a non-official teacher in my entire entrepreneurship uh, life li lifetime. So this is how I look at it. So the team mm -hmm. makes thumbnails, titles, they tag, and, yeah. and every time something needs to be corrected, I'll say, hey, here's how I tweaked it. I'll send them my files. This is why it changed. Do you understand? Yeah, you still play your role as a director. And yeah, you know. only if I have to. Yeah. But they don't need to check in. They post things without me. They, they, do, they answer comments. Wow. They just okay. do whatever they need to do. There's the, um, yeah. there's the, the book, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek. Yep. Yeah, Timothy Ferris. Yeah. And yeah. he exactly talks about that, you know, okay. like giving the freedom to your staff. And he mentions a very specific example. If it's, if it's going to cost more than $100, give mm. me a call. If it's gonna cost less than a hundred dollars to keep the customer happy, mm. just go for your life. You know? Yeah, and it's it's about that freedom, you know. Yeah, to basically uh, let the system, you know, run for itself. Yeah, with, without you there yeah. all the time. I'd go a little further than the hundred dollar question. I say yeah. act in the best interests of the company and the customer, and yeah. you have to use your brain to figure that out. Mm. And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay for you to waste some money because we have money to waste. Yeah. And it's important for me, for you to learn how to make decisions, mm -hmm. knowing that it's okay to F it up from time to time. Not consistently and don't make the same mistake twice, yeah. but you can do that. Learn from that. So we do this all the time. We screw up <laughs> all the time. Ben will say, hey, can we hire this person? I'm like, yeah. Three months later, he's like, Chris, I had to fire him. No problem. What did you learn? Yeah. Okay, apply that next time. All good. Because the inverse right. of that is not a good way to run a company, which is I effed up, you step on my head, and now I'm afraid to make a decision. So now instead of moving things along, I'm just waiting for you to make the decision. Mm -hmm. And then now I have no responsibility. I have no accountability. And then all that work that was mm -hmm. being done, now I have to do. Yeah. And so then now I start to resent this person and say, look, why aren't you doing your job? Why can't? It's because I set up a system that punishes you to mm -hmm. make a decision. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. I think, it, you know, uh, I love the concept of systems because I don't think we're taught that as designers in, in school anyway. But... I feel like, you know, the more comfortable you are with setting up those systems in the beginning, uh, the more success, successful you can become at, you know, basically letting go. And um, delegating. Because otherwise you're kind of doing everything yourself. Yeah. And we take so much pride in that, that it's so hard to let go 
then you know you end up kind of trying to do everything and you do so little you know but if you've got a right system placed you know things can run and and you can scale as well yeah do you guys know who alex Hermosi is i'm not familiar with him okay. no no well, check him out after this but okay. he he puts out a lot of videos he's a relatively young man i think he was like in his early 30s when he sold this company for 100 million dollars yeah and he says that <laughs> making the first hundred thousand dollars was the hardest thing he's ever had to make yeah and he says everybody is put in this category it's an arbitrary number but he says basically from zero to hundred thousand dollars you still haven't mastered the key concepts of entrepreneurship mm. you're still trading time for money mm -hmm. yeah. and then once you go beyond that you start to trade money for money or money for time. It's yeah. the opposite, right? So right yeah. now, I have no money, Flip it. Mm. right? I have no money and mm. I can't build systems, I can't hire people, so I'm gonna work real hard, so I'm trading my time for money. Mm -hmm. As soon as I make enough money, mm. this is the big flip, the, the way that people get beyond $100,000. But is, you get beyond the hump, right? Yeah, you have to get beyond that. So now I have mm. some money saved, I've lowered my living costs, but my revenue, my runway is much higher. I will take some of that money, I will buy back my time. And the way I do that is I hire other people to do what normally I would do, so yeah. that I can go and do more important things to, to then generate even more revenue. So yeah. it's a critical juncture. So mm. most entrepreneurs who are under $100,000 tend to be solo operators. They yeah. don't want to manage people, they don't want to delegate. They, they're the choke point of their own company. Yeah. They think and they believe that they're the best and most efficient at doing their job and they can trust no one. Yeah. And so they're stuck. So once you go beyond the $100,000, and you've mastered uh, trading your money for time, mm. all of a sudden you can accelerate like a skyrocket mm. or you just rocket off there, right? Mm. Like a rocket ship. So at that point, you can get from 100,000 to a million to two million fairly quickly. It's mm. much, much easier. And yeah. the same principle is true getting your first 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, right. Right? You gotta getting really, your first, yeah. yeah, you have to grind through it. You just have to mm. learn things. You're not making any money, so you can't afford to hire other people. You're not even sure this is a thing that you should be doing. I feel like we like tick, 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 tick. Yeah, man, boxes, like, yeah, I'm looking know. at you. I, I know. You look at Ali, like, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I know. Man, yeah. it's like, we, we're, I talk to entrepreneurs all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we, we're at a point, like, this is just three of the most uh, affordable cameras you can find in the market at the <laughs> mm -hmm. moment, right? Yeah. And but Ali and I were at a point where, okay, now the next step, what is it? So do we get a space to set up? Do we keep setting up every time we should, we turn the cameras on, you know? And that's when you start to, um, to your point, that's when you start to make those decisions. Like Alex was saying before, I keep going back to him, but it's, it just resonated with me. Um, you, instead of putting all that money into hats, why don't you create your own opportunities by yeah. investing in yourself, just believing in yourself, like really, yeah. what's your USP, right? Is that, um, mm. do you remember the, the time where you have to make that decision and just really focus on content and start, I'm gonna assume, and start putting more money into paid ads, you know? This is a complicated question, can you reframe it? I thought yeah. I knew where you're going with this question, and then you put in paid ads at the end, I'm like, what? Well, I think, well, I think, well, I think what... marketing, marketing the company, you know? Okay. I, 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 was there a point for you when you said, okay, I'm gonna focus more on the content as opposed to marketing the traditional way? Mm. No, because I don't like to, I'm not a traditional person, I don't want mm -hmm. conventional mm. results, I don't do conventional things. Um, later on when I introduce myself, it's like, I like to break stuff. I, mean, I just don't mm. accept anything for the way things are. Hence mm. the baseball bat on stage? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Don't, give away. don't give it away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not giving away any because I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to Oh yeah, yeah. In the Jason, moment. Jason was saying that yeah. it was more of a see what happens. See what happens. Thing. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's still no BS conference, right? So that's yeah. it. Yeah. So the, the, the um, shoot, I lost my thought. What was your question? <laughs> no, that's right. You say you, you're not a conventional guy. You're not expecting, you know, oh, yeah, marketing, things. you yeah. know, so marketing mm. says, and we've seen the playbook because there's so many versions of this out there. So we think this is the way. So what you see is you see an ad that mm. has a crazy over promise, mm. um, some kind of yeah. image to pull you in mm. and is speaking to usually guys who want to make money quickly, mm. and there's a, a thing that you can do with no money that doesn't require any kind of degree or training. Oh, we're talking you know about, talking about? Trainings, uh, free Yeah, trainings. there's a gazillion, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a gazillion of those. Yeah, and then yeah. tune into this webinar. So much And you bait. tune into the webinar, and mm. it takes mm. forever for them to give you any value, and they yeah. might drop one gem, yeah. and say, if you want the rest, they, they, they upsell the packages, they bundle things together. <laughs> there's a false scarcity. It's like textbook, It's, right? it's, it's textbook. already a structure yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it works, obviously, because yeah. yeah. they keep putting more money into it. And they look at it, if I spend $50, 
I'll give back $70, totally yeah. cool. I make $20 yeah. net gain. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because you're usually producing a digital information product, it doesn't cost you any more to deliver it, right? Mm -hmm. And so they spend 50 bucks. And so I talk to Ben about this all the time. If we have to spend 50 bucks to get a new customer, why don't we just lower the price to $20 so we don't pay a middle person money that doesn't create value for anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's, I challenge them all the time to say, mm -hmm. every dollar you spend, think about how else I can spend that money that empowers our people to do better. Wouldn't it be better wow. if I okay. said, uh, it, like say for example, I teach typography, right? Wouldn't it be better if we just reduce our price so that we then purchase the font for you, yeah. that it comes bundled with the course, so you get the maximum mm. value and then we do no advertising. Yeah. Alex mm. Ramosi talks about this in his book, $100 million offers. He says there's basically three components to basically being able to sell anything, right? Mm. There's a starving audience that wants your product. Two, there's your offer, right? Mm. And three, your ability to convince people to buy the thing, mm. right? So he's like, let's look at this equation. So if there's no starving audience for your product, it doesn't matter how good your product is and how good you are at convincing people, no one wants it. Mm. So he's like, you must have a starving audience if you want to make a lot of money and grow mm. your company. And then if you don't have a great offer, then mm. it's all about high pressure sales, persuasion, your ability mm. to convince people stuff, right? And so we can look at it a lot of different ways. And, and he'll say things like this. Your, your product is probably crap. That's why you're doing marketing. <laughs> right? Wow. That's, right. that's okay. really it. That's yeah. powerful and, and kind of, it's true, but it's true. it kind of hurts a little bit. A you little know? bit. I know. Because <laughs> it's the truth. Because it's, it's the truth, true, right? Yeah. And, and I put this comment out there and people got really triggered by it because, yeah, like, are you talking to us? And I said, mm, if, if, if the suit fits, you know, the yeah, suit yeah, fits yeah. where? <laughs> My thing is, I would say to them, our free courses are better than their paid courses. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have a, I'm playing some crazy infinite long game where I think I'm going to guilt you into buying something. Mm. So he's like, you know, if you work on your product, you won't have to sell. And actually, if your product is so good, you mm. won't even have to ask because they'll ask you, how can I buy your product? Yeah. And that's the state I want to be in. So I want to mm. be so far on the equation on the side of giving value and creating impact for mm. people that they feel like I feel mm. like a total scumbag taking from you this entire time mm -hmm. that I need to do something. And mm -hmm. something could be, I'll like and share this post, or I'll attend your conference, or I'll go to your workshop, or I'll just send you money or buy your book. Some versions so that they mm -hmm. can feel mm -hmm. like the, the balance and the scale is somehow writing itself. So it's not so lopsided. It, it kind of resonates, uh, and it, it sounds a little bit like uh, what um, Kevin was saying yesterday about brand. It's like, how can brands tell a story from the perspective of the customer as opposed to from their own? It kind of feels a little bit like that. You're like adding value as opposed to just asking them to come to you. You know, like what can you give the customer or the, or the prospective customer uh, before they even buy your product? Also, because you have so much value to give, you know, that you don't have to force the sale. It's like more of an organic thing. You know, when they come to you, they already know what you can offer. Um, and, and I think like that's kind of where, where you're going as well a little bit with a question before it's, um, Sometimes yeah. we think, um, you know, offering value and kind of putting ourselves out there is going to create uh, the sale that, you know, I suppose, as opposed to actually doing marketing, you know, and, yeah. and putting money into ads. Um, you know, we're showing ourselves as pure as we can as we can get and and you know if you like what you see, mm. this is what you're going to get mm. when you work with us. I feel us, like branding know? keeps evolving, right? Uh, when I was at uni, branding was a logo and a business card. No, <laughs> it wasn't. It well, it's for, not evolving that, like that. That's what, that's what they taught right. me. Yeah, Yeah. that's because, I'm sorry to say this, your teachers didn't know any better. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yeah. never been that. I was saying yeah, before, I didn't go to art. Kevin, to, Kevin spoke about this yeah, a lot, right? Yeah, so, okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're loosely using terminology we don't understand and applying mm. ways that shouldn't be used. And we dilute the power of certain words and it's just a really bad thing. Mm. Like I'll give you an example. You know the word peruse. Do you know what the word peruse mm -hmm. means? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Peruse. Peruse. Like I, I was going to peruse that book. Yeah, just exactly. like quickly look at yeah, something, yeah, yeah. right? Well, the original definition of the word peruse is to read something carefully. Mm. But when you say, I'm going to peruse this book, somebody mishears it, misinterprets it, and then decides where I'm going to look through it quickly. Okay. Mm. And so English is a strange language that they then change the meaning. So now mm. it's two meanings that are opposite of each other. Gotcha. Mm. So we have to be careful. There's a quote that I read in, in, in Ronald Baker's book, uh, Implementing Value Pricing, in the beginning it says, all transformation is linguistic. That yeah. if we want to change the culture, we have to change the language. Mm. So this is why we have to be very intentional about the words that we choose. Man, your retention mm. of words is, is just keeps amazing me. 
Well, like, I appreciate that. You, you but keep, I never you thought do, of myself that way. No, before. seriously, like you keep quoting, quoting. Like I feel like I could go and check that quote, and it would be yeah. verbatim, you know. So yeah, amazing man. Um, the well, I don't want to keep you for much longer. I'm really loving this conversation, but yeah. but lastly, um, before we wrap it up, I wanted to ask you. You've been re- exploring artificial intelligence lately. Yep. Um, the post <coughs> about no BS. Yep. Um, can I assume it's Dali, or is there any other? A platform that you've been using for AI? I've been using it mostly mid journey. Okay. And I'm trying to get onto stable diffusion. Okay. Or is it subtle? Stable diffusion. And and Dali as well. But I mm. when I'm writing talks and traveling, I got no time to play with the toys. Mm. Yeah. Because toys are like this really deep rabbit hole and mm. you can go down so far that you can <laughs> lose track of time. Can we get a two minute prediction from uh, Chris from the future? What's gonna happen with AI? How's it gonna Absolutely. impact the business? Yeah. Um, if you're not paying attention AI, machine learning will put you out of business and mm. it's only going to grow in its power, its um, ability to render high fidelity images that are really accurate and that you can use natural speech to talk to it. Mm. So every creative field from writing, video production, stock photography, illustration, concept art to graphic design, even type font creation <laughs> is going to be impacted by this because the rate in which it's improving is ridiculously scary. I'll tell you this, um, one of my former students, his name is Show Russ and he has this thing called Show AI. And what he had the program do was to read like 150 standards manuals for corporate <laughs> identity systems, right? Okay. And he's trained the machine to work as it can write an entire manual from, with almost no input from you yeah. and create an entire thing for you. And so he told me, Chris, we should make a robot, we should make doe.ai, which would then basically, if you asked it a question about business or negotiations, it would answer in my voice not literally my voice, but write it out for you, that mm-hmm. it would almost be indistinguishable to most people. Wow. And that, so he you, wants to train that would be robot. you teaching the machine? Yeah, in, you don't really teach the machine. It crawls through all the videos, oh, it reads it all the okay, documents, gotcha. it, it just, tra- so somebody, some human would probably uh, transcribe all the videos that he yeah. wants it to study, okay. so it can see the words, okay. and then it can see this, and then, then the role plays, because we have hours and hours of that, as you can imagine, that it would just train yeah. it so it knows, like, you know, how so should is I that, price. Is that happening? Did I hear it's that gonna right? It's going to happen. Oh, it's it's happen. not happening okay. yet. Okay. I, I need to sign some contracts. We're going to enter in some business agreement together. Yeah, of course. Okay. And so I'm very excited about it. Artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to be, if not more disruptive than the internet was to industries. So I'm just putting it out there. Amazing, Amazing man. Yeah. Amazing. Thanks Thank so you, much, man. Chris. My pleasure. That's great. Thank you so Thank much. Thanks for coming. All right. I've heard it.